It's time for cybersecurity to shine. October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month in the United States. It was created to ensure every American has the resources they need to stay safer and more secure online. The overarching theme for Cybersecurity Awareness Month 2021 is Do Your Part, Hashtag Be Cyber Smart. The theme empowers individuals and organizations to own their role in protecting their part of cyberspace. Footing unwanted expenses. Apple phone users beware as cybersecurity researchers have revealed an unpatched error in Apple Pay. Attackers can make an unauthorized visa payment with a locked iPhone by taking advantage of the express travel mode set up in the device's wallet. An attacker only needs a stolen and powered on iPhone. The transactions could also be relayed from an iPhone inside someone's bag without their knowledge. When socials were down, global users were hit by one of the longest outages on Facebook where all social networks the company owns, which include Messenger, Instagram and WhatsApp were down for nearly 6 hours. Even Oculus and Workplace were affected. The disruption which hit Facebook platform minutes before noon could be the result of an internal mistake, though sabotage by the insider would be theoretically possible. Malware in New Security Update The creators of Flubot have launched a new campaign that uses fake Android security update warnings to trick potential victims into installing the malware on their devices. Until recently, Flubot was spread to Android smartphones through spam text messages using contacts stolen from devices that were already infected with the malware. These messages would instruct potential victims to install apps on their devices in the form of APKs that were delivered by attacker-controlled servers. Plugging the data leak News about the personal data of millions of Malaysians aged 23 to 43 kept by the National Registration Department JPN appears to have been put up for sale online for about 35,000 ringgit, claimed Adnan Shukor, an IT expert on Twitter. Two cybersecurity experts gave their opinion that it could have happened due to their low cyber hygiene and risk assessments of their cybersecurity. Unmasking the human element in cybersecurity. People are forced to work from home due to the pandemic and this could leave them vulnerable to cyber attacks. According to the report by Kaspersky, it stated that 44% of employees were less concerned about updating their work devices than their personal devices which shows the lack of concern on cyber threats and this could make them a potential target. To find out more news on cybersecurity, you can log on to our screen. PC Focus interview. Together with us, we have a Sumit Bansal, Managing Director of Asian and Korean at Suppos. With more than 30 years' experience in the IT industry, Sumit has developed in depth knowledge in cybersecurity, solution, and services. So, today we're going to talk with Summit about ransomware. ransomware. Welcome, Summit. Thank you for having us. Glad to have you on the show. How how large is this uh, survey or uh, this study being done? Is it, uh, is it only Malaysia, involving Malaysia or Southeast Asia or the entire world? So uh, that's a really good question. Uh, we did the survey across 30 countries. Uh, majority of them uh, were in, in, uh, in Asia, in APJ, Asia Pacific and Japan, uh, some in Europe. So around 30 countries, all up. And, um, uh, you know, uh, including Malaysia, including Australia in our region, including Singapore. Um, and so it gives a good um, basis, a good reasonable basis of what's going on in, in, in this part of the world. 
what makes ransomware more dangerous compared to other form of uh, sec cyber security attack? Okay, sure. Um, before we get into what, what's more dangerous, uh, let me ask you, Shira. You mentioned that you've never come across ransomware. Um, yeah. Let me explain to everyone what ransomware is. Mm -hmm. We're using an analogy. So let's say you drive your uh, your beautiful car into a park, uh, you know, car park in a mall, and someone clamps your wheel. Okay, and and you. So what happens then? You will you can't drive your car, mm -hmm. but you can see your car. Yes. Okay. So ransomware is is very similar. So you can see your data on your computer, but you will not be able to use it. It's like you can't drive your car. So unless I unclamp that wheel, you can't drive your car. Same way, uh, ransomware clamps your data and uh, encrypts it so that you can't use it anymore. So you can see it, but you can't use it. Looking at the uh, rate of mm. ransomware attacks around the world, yeah. can we say that this is not initiated by individuals, but rather an organized crimes or, or professionals themselves? Yeah, you're right. So, so you're very right. So there's, there are organized uh, criminals who are behind this because there's money to be made. Um, it's not just individuals. And there are, it's almost like a factory, uh, Professor Jazz. So, you know, someone writes the malware they sell it to someone, and they these people then use it to attack and 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 cause uh, you know ransom uh, and ask for ransom. So essentially, um, you know, the hacker themselves who may have written the program may not be the one eventually using it to attack other organizations. There are criminals who do it, uh, and because as you can see, if if, if the you know ransom paid is uh, so much. Um, then it's a lucrative business for them. Uh, what are the common misconception organization have with ransomware? Yeah, I, I think that's a very good question, uh, and, and, and the answer lies in this. So, so most people think that if they pay a ransom, they will um, they will get their uh, they get the data back. But you know, you are trusting a criminal that they will do what they said they will do, which is to give your data back. Uh, in, in a lot of cases, uh, that is not the case. Um, so, so essentially, uh, 65, we find that 65% of the people who paid ransom um, could restore the data back to normal, only 65%. Uh, and then we found that um, uh, out of those, only 30% um, got all of the data back. And, um, uh, by, by paying the ransom and there's also a chance that you can get ransomed again and that's the other problem and uh, so so because you could be an easy target you you know uh, maybe you didn't learn your lesson from the first time and you could um, still have an issue or sh still have the malware hiding somewhere uh, and the hackers can use that to, to really uh, uh, cause the attack again what do you think of ransomware now uh, yeah, I'm getting in excited and to know more about the ransomware. So just now, Sumit, you were mentioned about 65% of respondents covering their data. Okay. However, the report yeah. recommends not paying the ransom in the first place. Yes. Why does Purpose recommend this? Of all the customers, uh, or of all the people who got hit by ransomware, um, half of them got hit again. So 50% of them got hit again. So it's, it's something that um, they're seen as an easy target. So if you pay ransom once, you may be ransomed again. And, um, and so that's why we don't encourage that. So, so can, can I say basically, invest the money to the right place uh, yes. to, to, to do a backup strategy, redundancies, yes. data protection, instead Absolutely. of paying the ransom to these guys. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, so what we recommend uh, would be always do backups. Uh, assume that you will be hit. So don't think that because you're a smaller company or a medium-sized company, um, you won't be hit just like a large company. Um, organized uh, ran, hackers don't care what size company you are. If if the company you if you are attracted to them in terms of um, you, you know, you will pay ransom uh, because you have data or you have, your business can be disrupted, um, they will attack you. 
Um, and of course, you know, making sure that you have, um, as you said, Professor Jazz, have the systems in place first. Make sure that um, you're investing in in securing your environment and also your suppliers' environment, you know, and, and the customers' environment. We will take a break and return with more insight about what the ransomware can do to us. We will be right back. education institution globally were targeted by ransomware in 2020 yeah. with 58% of those saying that cyber criminals succeeded in creating their data. Yeah. Can you explain to us why such industries are targeted? Yeah, uh, it's a very good question and again uh, um, there are two, it's not just education, also healthcare. So um, I, I personally have spoken to many customers in education um, where they had to move from being physical schools to being online. And, um, you know, uh, even my kids were, uh, you know, working, uh, not working, but uh, learning from home, remote, remote learning. And, uh, you know, suddenly they had to have systems on their, on their laptops and, and get ready for school. Um, and, um, you know, it, you know, it was done really hastily. Um, some, some, I remember laughing at uh, some of the, the parents, they said they didn't even have desks at home because they didn't think this was going to happen. Um, but anyway, um, so education became more online and it became more remote. Um, and a lot of applications that the kids were using, uh, were there. Uh, so. Again, it, it comes down to disruption, and that's why they were targeted. Plus, um, it, you know, schools uh, will have all the information about, uh, you know, school fees, how much was paid, who paid it, um, all that information about the, uh, the, the customer, the, the student, which can be useful um, to a hacker. And um, so uh, that's why schools were targeted, because A, you know, we had to do everything in a hurry, right? If you, if you meant, you can remember back when when pandemic happened. Uh, suddenly, uh, you know, we were told to stay home, and then when the, the schools reopened, we were all kind of uh, uh, the kids were learning from from home, and and all these connections back into the school happened, and they may not have been secured because they didn't prepare for this thing to happen. So it's not just schools. Um, I found a lot of customers didn't have laptops, didn't have. Um, uh, you know, secure VPN connections back into the, to their organization to access uh, the applications they would normally do during their work time. And, um, and, and because of the pandemic and, and, when it happened, and the customers who were not prepared, they had to do it in a very quick manner. And they, they probably didn't do it in a very secure way. And um, schools were definitely targeted. Healthcare also very much targeted. I know in, in Singapore and Malaysia, I spoke to quite a few schools uh, and, and, and private schools as well, who were worried that they could not reopen the school uh, for another week or so and, uh, and the school was opening. So uh, because the systems were down, they couldn't get any of their, their um, classes going. 
So it's, you know, and as you can understand also in the private sector, it's a very lucrative business. Education, you know, it's big fees uh, paid by, by uh, parents to, uh, to these educations, uh, educational students. But yeah, that's the reason. Uh, following up question, uh, uh, Summit, I yeah. just would like to ask your view uh, in terms of uh, this perspective that I'm going to share with sure. you. In, yeah. in, in any civilization, we have extremists, terrorists. Yes. No. So you, ha you call it religious terrorists or, mm -hmm. or extremists. Um, yeah. It could be... Uh, uh, societal or, um, or racial extremists. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I, I, I'm wondering whether there is a whether there is a technology terrorist or technology extremist, which which we can uh, categorize such as these ransomware attackers. Can they be classified as a technology terrorist? Yeah, you're right. Um, so so it's not very far from what you're just saying. And there are some groups um, um, who target high value targets and they like to tell everyone who they are and when they're attacking. And um, just like you mentioned, terrorists like to tell, claim what they've done. And um, uh, Colonial was one of them. So the, the group was called Dark Side, I believe. Um, and um, essentially they, they were targeting high value targets um, and uh, government organization utilities were the ones that they were looking for. So, you know, for example, electricity companies, oil companies, oil and gas companies, they were targeting um, these kind of organizations. Uh, why? Because you, you, can you imagine that uh, any city who was under ransom for any electricity, utility, water, anything, uh, will have to pay if they want the services back? um if they haven't protected properly so um yes you're right there are certain uh, organizations that uh, like to um target high value targets and and they they like to show off they like to say who they are and uh, and advertise themselves is the law catching up um it, it's a cat and mouse situation uh, the law can do so much yes um uh, the law um the law is important and uh, and uh, a lot of people get prosecuted um it, it, you know uh, based on but it, again it's collaboration so the countries have to collaborate when when these act because the actors don't have to necessarily be in malaysia to attack malaysia they can be anywhere in the world so you know, you need to have the collaboration between countries to, to, to be able to catch them. Um, but I, I think education is quite important as well. And, uh, you know, government organizations, uh, government should really do a lot uh, in, uh, and then cybersecurity Malaysia is doing a great job. We work with them very closely. They're doing a good job in, in um, educating customer, uh, the uh, government organizations and even commercial organizations on uh, what is the minimum they should do uh, to be protected, but um, you know, law will definitely help. But it, it's a bit of both. You need to be protect. You, you need to protect your own assets. You need to be uh, to make sure that you have uh, external help where you your uh, expertise might not be enough. Uh, and and then of course uh, education of not only the uh, the organization but also the users. You know. Um, because as you know, the weakest point could be the user themselves, you know, being, um, being fished. So if you have any feedback or comments, please email to ESPC. I believe the, we have gone through a very important subject on the show about ransomware. See us next time around with a much more interesting program to come. Do watch us, ESPC.